Hello, it's Loretta West from Color Guard Studio. And today I wanted to show you one of the new tangles I came up with. It is sort of like the tangle um, Sturkles, but it's a little different. Um, here it is, here's some variations of it right here. It's very easy to do. And I first noticed this pattern or a variation of it on the carpet of a very long hallway in a uh, hotel. And it was just a fun pattern and each, um, which was really cool, each floor had a different color variation of the same pattern. So it was neat to walk down there. I don't know, sometimes those long hallways in, uh, in, hotels can be monotonous, but this one was not monotonous. It was a lot of fun. So I think somebody was really thinking about what they wanted to do. So you're gonna, this one, you start with a pen. So today I am using um, Micron PN for plastic nib of archival ink. And uh, what I like about this is if you have uh, hands are a little shaky, <laughs> doesn't matter, you know, embrace the shake on this one because it's, it's that simple and uh, it looks great, shaky or not shaky. So start with, I'm gonna start on my left hand side here and just do a little sample of a little swervy line, curvy line, I'm gonna put that on there. And we're gonna do another one there and intersect it now and again. And it can be, see how it can be wavy, big waves, little waves. So what I'm calling this is sea beads. And I'll spell it out and draw it in pen in a sec here so you can see. But it's just so simple. And really gratifying. I'm going to do another one over here. So I'm just doing a little sample today of sea beads and some variations so you can see. So it is spelled, oh, I'll write this down here so you can see, S-E-A hyphen B-E-A-D-Z, sea beads. And um, it just, yeah, reminds me of uh, kelp floating in the ocean. So once you have the basic lines down, then you start by corralling them together here and there with circular forms, some sort of orb shape. It can be oval, it can be quite round. It's up to you. I'm just doing these at random and I'm not thinking about where I wanna place them so much as just being random in their placement. And they can be large and small. They don't have to be all the same size. So I'll just put another small one there. And then from there, you can go in and just add again, this is very random, black in little bits that have been corralled here and there. All different. And also I'm gonna black in these little seed shapes that are naturally made. Not all of them. So here I've got this sort of X going through there. So I'm just gonna do the top and bottom.
But you certainly can black in all of those elongated shapes if you wish. But I'm going to skip some. I'm going to do this side here, do the little sides there. This is just a lovely free flowing tangle or pattern. So I'm going to get a little closer for you so you can see a little better. Just imagine that you're floating just like seaweed on the ocean. To go black this in here too. And then from there, I'm going to take my pencil. And today I have a Zentangle pencil. And uh, it's actually an Entangle pencil because the Z is missing. Oops. And it's an HD pencil. HB, not HD. Hmm. I've been watching too much Netflix. OK. And then I can decide, you know, what do I want to shade here? What areas? We'll just shade in here. And I also have a blending stump or a torchion. I can go in and do a little shading in places here, maybe like that. Holding the pencil very lightly. Oh, I can see one here that I missed down here and over there. So I'm going to do this one. Oh, go back. And one over here. On there a little bit. And maybe in here. So you can see there's going to be a lot of play with this. You don't have to black in those areas. You could um, do diagonal lines or some other tangle in there that's teeny weeny. So really has a lot of variation, a lot of playability, for lack of a better word, but you can really play around with it. Flexibility, that's the word I'm looking for, flexibility. So maybe one here, Just combining that. There's one variation. I'm going to do another variation here just very quickly for you. Okay, just I find too, if you sort of do it quickly, you're not thinking as hard and that's Probably a good thing. Kind of scribbly, but that's good. And then I'm going to do my orbs. Corralling in these crazy lines. And this one I'm going to again black in. Just not doing quite as many orbs this time, but you can do as many as you wish. Okay, and then 
I'm going to go in and shade where the lines are. Just going to take my pencil very lightly and just cover right over these lines. So when you're holding your pencil, maybe think about the waves on the ocean and the way water moves and how lightly can you hold your pencil. How lightly can it be like an ocean wave and just move lightly. So I've got that covered, and I'm going to go in with my blending stuff, my torchion, and I'm going to just blend out where these lines are to give it a little more depth. I like to hold it on its side a little bit. Just to work better that way. As you can see, you're just getting some fun going on here. You know, this is just sort of a springboard here for you today. So you can try it and then come up with your own variations ways to adapt this into your own Zentangle artwork. So you get an idea of what you got there, a little bit of fun. A little more shading in there. You can also, besides shading the way I did, you can also take, so these little torchions or bunding stumps have this ribbed tip, you can take a good HB pencil or softer. So you have a, I've got one here. I've got one handy here. Oh, here's one really soft. A 9B pencil. That's super soft. And you can utilize that by just putting it, rubbing it quite hard on the tip. And then if you like a real subtle shading, you can use that like a pencil. Okay, so then we'll try one more here. Maybe a couple more, but to show you what color does to it. So again, we're doing our intersecting crazy lines. doing little bits of these orbs like that. I'm going to take two colors. Um, I'm using Koi coloring brush pen and uh, they're made by Sakura in Japan. That's how pretty they are. So I'm going to do an orange and it's wild purple. Let's see what this does. 
Ooh, they are wild together. I'll do it. I'm going for it. So then you can segment off. And this is also works really well with colored pencils. Just gonna pick that color up on the other side of this. They don't have a really tiny tip. Their tips kind of fat, but their colors are great. So for little areas, they're kind of difficult, but I'm doing the best I can here. Hard to get in the corners. I'm just going to add a little color here. Carry on here with some orange, alternating as best I can. Oh, thought it didn't alternate very well, but that's okay. I'm going to go for it. Just carry it on. It's very psychedelic. It reminds me of uh, of mid-century, not mid-century, before that, 60s. The 60s kind of stuff going on there color-wise. Let's see. Let me introduce a third color here. What does this yellow do? Yellow can kind of be weird sometimes, especially if it's really bright. I have a pink. Let's try this pink. I'm so fond of the yellow with this. Okay, let's do some pink in here. Oh, that's all right. We'll just see, imagine what you can do with this if you wanted to. How much fun. So I hope you give it a try, sea beads. And if you want to, you can send me a photo of your completed sun tangle used with that, that tangle and any variations you come up with and uh, send it to me, Loretta, L-O-R-E-T-T-A, West, W-E-S-T, 18 at color, no, not at color, sorry, at, <laughs> oh dear, gmail.com. Send it to me, and I'd be happy to see what you're doing with this new Tangle Sea Beads. Take care, stay well.